Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Spread across Wayne and Monroe counties, homes are damaged, trees uprooted, power knocked out. It is a mess after two tornadoes touched down late last night. Priya Mann is in Gibraltar this afternoon as we are hearing from homeowners who survived this storm. Priya. Karen, frightening moments and a massive cleanup currently underway. We are live in Gibraltar and take a look. Crews right now are trying to secure that pole to make sure it doesn't fall on anyone. You can see down power lines really across this parking lot and there is a huge mess to clean up. A portion of this roof actually collapsed into the parking lot and down trees are making it very difficult for people to get in and out. And this is just one apartment complex. Scenes like this playing out across Wayne and Monroe counties. Significant damage across Monroe County after two tornadoes touched down Tuesday. In Frenchtown Township, massive pine trees were uprooted. On one property alone, 25 to 30 trees were toppled, leaving holes in the roof and landing on cars. Just down the road, this barn was completely leveled. The 100-year-old structure was flattened and parts of the roof were discovered in a tree a short distance away. The roof of this home collapsed and the subsequent rain caused significant damage inside. Crews were busy repairing the roof and removing trees. This this garage was ripped in half due to the strong winds. The homeowner put up tarp to keep the rain out of a hole in the side of their home. In Gibraltar, another massive tree was uprooted on this corner home. The grass looked more like a roll of carpet and tree trimmers were busy trying to cut the tree down to remove it. A lot of damage. Trees down on houses anywhere from here to Gibraltar. Um, a lot of people need a lot of help. A lot of tarps, tree removal companies. That's what we're here for. And roofers and tree trimming crews have been working around the clock to try to clean up this mess. The National Weather Service confirms an EF1 tornado touched down in Frenchtown Township. That same storm produced a slightly weaker tornado, which hit here in Gibraltar and Berlin Townships. Now, coming up at 5 o'clock, you're going to hear from a Gibraltar family who hid in a closet as this tornado touched down. A lot more coverage coming up and a lot more uh, stories. We've actually got some military members behind me who are cleaning up. So a lot of coverage here coming up at 5 and six o'clock. Reporting live from Gibraltar, I'm Priya Mann for before. All right, we'll check back with you in about an hour, Priya. Meantime, Ben is tracking our forecast. The question, are we going to be rain free as we go forward and all these people are trying to clean up? We are definitely going to get a much needed break, Karen, but we are getting late word from the weather services. They're now saying that there were three tornadoes that touched down last night. Same path, but it was broken up into three separate segments and that Gibraltar segment where Priya was, they're now rating that is an EF1 as well with wind speeds of upwards of 100 miles per hour and you saw from some of that damage uh, that looks about right. Temperatures outside huge difference mid to upper 60s. The humidity is gone. The winds have been noticeable today, but not damaging just enough uh, to stir up a breeze out of the west northwest there at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So a crisp and cool evening tonight. We'll be down into the 50s by midnight. Some of us in fact, all of us going to the 40s, but wait do you see some of these lows we're expecting for the weekend. That's all coming up in just a few minutes. Controversy on Capitol Hill. The stage is set for a high stakes hearing in Washington surrounding sexual assault allegations against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Lawmakers ramping up their rhetoric this afternoon as a new accuser comes forward. Kimberly Gill joins us now live from the newsroom with the very latest. Kim. Karen, over the last two weeks, the Senate Judiciary Committee has juggled allegations from two different women, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford and Deborah Ramirez, both accusing Michael Kavanaugh of sexual assault. Well, just this morning, a third woman went public supporting Ford and Ramirez's claims. Julie Swetnick says she saw Kavanaugh at numerous parties in the 1980s during high school. Swetnick says Kavanaugh drank heavily and engaged in abuse and aggressive behavior toward girls, including multiple instances of pushing himself against his female classmates without consent and trying to remove their clothes. Kavanaugh, in a statement issued this afternoon, vehemently denies the allegations of sexual misconduct. The Supreme Court nominee says, quote, this is ridiculous and from the twilight zone. I don't know who this is and this never happened, end quote. Now, as attention builds up in Washington before tomorrow's hearing, lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are speaking out. Uh, listen. Senate Democrats <clears throat> and their allies are trying to destroy a man's personal and professional life on the basis of decades-old allegations that are unsubstantiated and uncorroborated. 
How is it that the Republicans can decide the allegations are a sham when they won't do an FBI investigation and there hasn't yet been a hearing? As I really want to hear from Dr. Ford and accord her the respect and the due process that she deserves as well as uh, Judge Kavanaugh. And, I, I want to treat Dr. Ford as if she were my daughter, and, and but I, I want to treat Judge Kavanaugh as if he were my son. Well, meanwhile, President Trump continues to support Brett Kavanaugh and insists the Democrats are attempting to mislead the Judiciary Committee. He's outstanding. You don't find people like this. He's outstanding. He's a, he's a gem. He's an absolute gem. And he's been treated very unfairly by the Democrats who are playing a con game. They know what they're doing. It's a con. Now, just a few hours ago, the White House announced the president will be holding a press conference at 5 p.m. It's a rare solo press conference. No word yet if he plans to discuss uh, Mr. Kavanaugh and these issues. Uh, with numerous supporters on both sides of the issue, the stage is set for a long and contentious hearing tomorrow in Washington. So, Karen, we'll continue to follow it for it. But until follow it until then, though, we'll send it back to you in the studio. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Kim. Well, we will have live coverage of the Brett Kavanaugh hearings tomorrow in Washington, anchored by our Sandra Lee. It all gets started at 9 a.m. on Click on Detroit and the Local 4 Facebook page. Frustration, outrage, and confusion. A community of parents, students, and teachers left with far more questions than answers this afternoon after the Board of Directors for the Detroit Delta Preparatory Academy announces the school will be shutting down. The announcement was made this morning and their last day is less than one week away. Let's turn things over to Paula Tupman. She joins us live and do we understand exactly why the school is closing, Paula? Well, I, I think we're starting to get a sense enrollment dropped by almost half this year. The board president tells me basically there just wasn't enough horsepower to keep this thing going. But what students and parents really want to know is why couldn't that have been figured out before the start of the school year? And why not before the 11th and a half hour? <laughs> Students of Delta Preparatory Academy spilled out onto the streets in the middle of a school day, frustrated, angry, and feeling betrayed. They just shut us down out of nowhere. We don't have nowhere to go. We're our seniors. Whose school is going to accept us? Basically, they was telling us that they didn't have enough money to keep our school open. They didn't have enough money to pay the landlord for our building. Parents say the enrollment was less than 200 at this 9th through 12th grade high school, and that's why they like the school. My daughter originally started at Renaissance, and she came to this school and completely turned her grades around. This school, it's smaller, it's more intimate. The charter school founded by the Detroit Alumni Association of the sorority Delta Sigma Theta nearly five years ago held an assembly this morning and informed parents and students the school is closing its doors, effective October 1st, giving a mere five days notice for parents and students to find a new school. I am furious to get this phone call from my daughter in the middle of the day that the school is closing with no pre-warning. The fiduciary for the school is Ferris State University and a nonprofit management firm called Equity was contracted to run the school with principal, staff and administration. As an organization, Equity presented to the board today in front of parents and families that we believe that the academy can run through the end of this school year in good financial standing. And options were presented for the, them to consider, the board members, um, so that the school could remain open through the rest of the school year. Edith Friley, the board president, says the plan presented was not sustainable, and she felt the need to close the school before student count day, Wednesday, October 3rd. The plan was not feasible for us. When we're looking at the figures, and we owe money from last year also, some vendors have not been paid, and we're looking at this excessive loan that was encouraged for us to take, and then the lack of student population, and all those figures together say, ah, I don't think you can make this budget every year. Okay, so student count day is critical because kids in chairs is equivalent to funding dollars. But honestly, Karen, this evening, uh, students are trying to figure out what do I do about homecoming, dance, and game? Parents are trying to figure out how the heck and where the heck do I send my kid to school for the rest of the year and before student count day? So much that they have to try to figure out and balance in such a short time. Now, you said that the students kind of poured out 
out of the assembly. Was that a full day of school or was it a half day of school? How did that work? Karen, that, that's another really disturbing thing. No, those kids just got very upset and they just poured out onto the sidewalk and kind of into the streets. No one stopped them. No one kept them in school. It was supposed to be another full day of school. Can't figure out any accountability for that. The kids just kind of came out and stayed out. Frustration on so many different levels. All right. Thank you, Paula. Still ahead, grocery shopping just got a whole lot easier. The popular chain store that will now deliver food right to your door without charging you extra. Plus, in good health, a new report reveals the superhero in all of us, how strangers on the street are stepping in to save people's lives.